Our first guest. In previous public salons, we had a number of people we were speaking about women's health, and we got a number of comments. What about men's health? We heard you. Our next guest is the founder and owner of a communications company charging big fees to big companies. But he would then turn around and give the same service to nonprofit groups for free. It's a wonderful idea. He's also the owner, I gotta say, of the Rheingold, which is this beautiful wooden boat. It's over 100 years old, and he lovingly maintains it, and he wins all the prizes. So if you ever go to the wooden boat festivals, that's his. Recently, he has turned his skills to the formidable task of convincing men that they might not live forever. <laughs> I know, that's difficult. I relate to this because when I was 19 years old, I broke my neck in a skiing accident. That was a little bit of a rude shock. Became a quadriplegic. May I offer my impersonal endorsement to what you are about to hear. Please welcome Wayne Hartwick. Thank you, Sam. I'm, I'm thrilled to start speaking, the first to start speaking with you here tonight. The first thing I'd like to do is just kind of set the common understanding. Something I didn't know a year ago. There is a problem with the health of Canadian men. Canadian men live unnecessarily short lives and have 10 unhealthy years, and most of it's preventable. Why? Because guys act like guys. And it just seems like it gets in the way of our own health. Most of this was news to me when I started with this initiative a year ago. So what I'd like to do is take you kind of on the inside of my, my life and my perspective on men's health as a specialist in public relations and communications. Now, for all the women that are here, don't tune out, because I believe you can have an influence on men. At least that's a theory. Uh, for any of you younger guys here, stay tuned. You'll learn something. Um, I must say, I've learned a lot. I have learned that a man is more than a prostate and a penis. So I'm done, thank you. But actually, uh, <laughs> actually, I do know a little bit more than that, but what we've done is we've taken the liberty of, with apologies to George Strambolopoulos, we've taken all the men's health statistics that are really interesting, and we, we've created men's health in a minute, or maybe just slightly less. Men and women attempt suicide in about equal numbers, but men are much more successful. Men are 85% more likely to die of arterial disease than women. Men are 40% more likely to die from diabetes. Almost all workplace deaths are males. Women outlive men by an average of 4.5 years. Men live 10 unhealthy years. And one in three can't see it. <laughs> I want to ask some of my business friends here tonight to check to see if there's a patent on that device. <laughs> so most of those statistics are needlessly high. And we wanted to know more about men's attitudes and possible motivators towards health. So we did research interviews with men across Canada. And I can tell you one thing, guys, we're really complicated. Most men didn't care that they might live a few years less than women. As a matter of fact, some of them said that their partners would probably look forward to it. <laughs> but when we told guys they might live 10 unhealthy years, they paid attention. We didn't say they'd do anything about it, but they did pay attention, which puzzles me why they wouldn't do anything about it. Because in the, all the information that I've seen come over my desk this last few years, it seems like it comes back the solution comes back to basics that most men already know. The basics like uh, eating a little better, sorry, one sec, eating better, being active, getting sleep, and seeing the doctor. Why is it that most men won't act on those things? Why is it that men wait until their health is in an absolute crisis before they go off and see the doctor? Right? Why is it that so many healthy actions just aren't seen as masculine, right? We go to the gym and we pump iron, yeah, that's okay. Ordering a salad when our friends are ordering burgers, no. Doing yoga, probably not. Psychologists have a term. 
that I just learned this past year, the hegemonic male. It sort of bundles up some of those characteristics or ideals of being a guy. And so you can see that asking for help, say if you're really depressed, just doesn't fit into that picture, which is a big factor in the real big tragedy of so many young men committing suicide. Now, I kind of like the term just because it sounds Neanderthal, very guy-like, right? But I do want to say one thing publicly here. I don't have any problem asking for directions. So I do not fit into this. <laughs> then there's testosterone. Another interesting lesson for me. A steroid that's seven times greater in men than women. Our resident scientist points to research that says that testosterone is one of the big drivers of hegemonic behavior. So, what are some of the effects of testosterone? <laughs> this is called response to dominant challenge. <laughs> this is called sensation seeking. Now, this is probably my weakness, and it might be for a lot of young guys here. Uh, unnecessary risk-taking and suicide are one of the biggest factors in, in young male deaths. But there are those who would say that testosterone's major effect is reflected in this diagram. <laughs> that the 19th century Korean royalty had a very interesting solution. All the royal guards were eunuchs. They lived 14 to 19 years longer, and women, they could be trusted. So, how do we take a bunch of uh, uh, hegemonic, testosterone-fueled men and motivate them when they see these actions of being healthy as a sign of weakness? I mean, it's the biggest marketing challenge I've ever encountered. We have to get men, get men to take control of their health the way they want to control everything else. We have to find the motivators that are going to make men want to pay attention to their health. Is it fear? Is it guilt? Is it incentive? We and others are researching into this, but it's a fairly new field and it's going to take time. So I'm glad to say that there is a bit of a men's health movement starting. Right now, of course, most notably, we've got Movember going on, growing mustaches, or at least trying to, to raise money and awareness for prostate cancer and men, men, men's mental health. And there are little nodes of activity starting on men's health across Canada. And I'm very proud to say that BC is a leader on a number of men's health fronts. In fact, it was Vancouver doctor Larry Goldenberg, who's here tonight, who is the founder of this Men's Health Initiative. But it's going to take a long time to fill in all those dots. So in the meantime, we've got to hope that you and others will help men find their motivators. And to help you along if you are motivated, we've got a couple things going on. In the lobby right now, there is our Know Your Numbers booth, where we will check your body mass index and give you a card that prompts you for three other critical tests or you could go into our website and look it up. In your programs were two brochures, 10 Steps to 10 Healthy Years and the Men's Maintenance Guide. Now that maintenance guide tells you what tests to get based on your age. So for example, if you're the younger guys here, testicular cancer is pretty much a young guy's thing. All you have to do is feel for lumps. How much fun can that be? You could ask for help. All men in their 40s should have had their blood pressure taken. Most men in their 40s have never had anything tested. If you're in your 50s and you haven't had the prostate exam, do it. And just so you know that you're not the only one who's uncomfortable. Okay, heart sounds good. All right, Mr. Griffin, I'm just going to need you to drop your pants and we'll check your prostate. Uh, what? Drop your pants, turn around, and lean forward. Um, uh, okay. So how's this work? You just feel my pulse? So we're... Ah! 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 What the hell was that? Mr. Griffin, that's a prostate exam. So... So how does his health story end? How does the health story of Canadian men end? Are we going to come up with a great marketing campaign that's going to motivate men to go take care of their health? Well, you know, we're sure going to try. But here's what I do know. Men can live longer and healthier lives, and it's largely in their control. We need you to help us get the message out by just doing the basics. Eat better, be more active, get, your, get the sleep and see the doctor. All of you can help us create a men's health movement in Canada. Thank you for that.